Good lucky crowd. James chapter number four today. James chapter number four. Recently I was talking to my father in law who lives out at the Licking Residential Care. I said, How's it going, Dad? He said, Son, the days are awfully long when you don't have anything to do. I said, Talk to me about that. He said, Well, they were in here cleaning the bathroom and I asked if I could sweep the floor and they told me no. <laughs> I go down, they hand me my breakfast, they hand me my supper, they hand me my dinner. I ask if I could clean the dishes and they say no, no you can't do that. He says, uh, I've just said life goes by quickly when you don't have anything to do. I come to this passage today, James chapter 4, verse 13. Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city, spend a year there, buy, sell, and make a profit. Let's talk about businessmen here. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Instead, you ought to say, if the Lord wills, he shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your arrogances, all such boasting is evil. Therefore, to him who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is a sin. We know the passage that teaches us to submit ourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee, draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. A principle by which I think we should live and be aware of every day of our lives. In a Peanuts cartoon strip, Charlie Brown says to Linus, Life is just too much for me. I've been confused from the day I was born. I think the whole trouble is that we're thrown into life too fast. We're not really prepared. And then Linus says to Charlie Brown, What did you want? A chance to warm up first? <laughs> Baseball is on the horizon. Spring training has begun. Pitchers have an opportunity to warm up before they go pitch. They get to throw some, some warm up in the bullpen. It's uh, not, not quite like that for us all the time, amen. But the endings of life begin at the moment of our conception. And nine months, we're on the field of life, amen. Some nuggets of wisdom that someone thought up. A day is a span of time no one is wealthy enough to waste. A day is a miniature eternity. The day will happen whether or not you get it up. It's the little things in life that really count. What good is a bathtub without a plug? <laughs> he who provides for this life but takes not care of eternity is wise for a moment but a fool for eternity. The outlook of life is very clearly seen in verse number 13. Come now and say today or tomorrow we will go to such and such a city and spend a year there, buy, sell, and make a profit. Men, businessmen, were making plans. And they were making plans by which they hoped they could profit. A doctor called one of his patients into his office to deliver some very important news. The doctor says, I've got good news and I've got bad news. And the man says, well, give me the good news. And the patient said, give me the good news. And the doctor says, you've only got a week, you've got a week to live. He says, oh my, what's the bad news? I should have told you that last week. <laughs> Ouch. Ouch. Verse 13, the new King James says, come now. King James says, go to now, literally means now listen. It's the only occurrence in the Bible where it says this. James is saying, come on now. Pay attention here. It's a pointed phrase that indicates the seriousness of what follows. It's as if he was saying, come on now, and you who are strutting around like you own the place, listen. This is, a, this is addressed to the wealthy merchants who traveled all over the ancient world buying and selling in the major trade centers. 
of the day. Because of the extensive shipping involved, it could easily take a year or more to set up a business somewhere. Their sin was not that they engaged to do business, but that they were counting on the future without any recognition of God who controls the future. It's not a bad thing to have plans for your future, plans to prosper, plans to prevail, plans to do good. Uh, but when you leave God out of the equation, then that becomes a problem because you're saying that you can do all things within your power and that you don't need God. And obviously, we all need God. Amen. Amen. We all need God. Okay, The business plan was pretty good. They had everything figured out, or almost everything. The when? They said today or tomorrow. Where? This or that city. Wherever they may be. How? Spend a year. What? Doing business. Why? To make money. And all their planning, they left out the most important, the who. God was nowhere in their plans. And like the rich farmer in the parable that Jesus told, who wanted to tear down his barns so he could build bigger ones, these businessmen were not bringing God into the details of their life. How sad it is when we forget to bring God into the details of our lives. And that's what it's preaching. That's what it's saying. The key is planning. The key, planning is great, but planning without prayer is presumption. Psalm 30 and 90 and 10, 70 years are given to us. Some may even reach 80, but even the best of these years are filled with pain and trouble. Our whole existence is a gift from God, church. From the day of our birth until the day of our death, we are blessed with life. Amen. I believe we ought to celebrate that life and appreciate that life. And we ought to celebrate the opportunities of life. Verse 14. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away. Life may be frail. But we sure are fond of it. Life may be frail, but we sure are fond of it nevertheless. Frail in that we can't always know the conditions and circumstances that these bodies may have to endure. I wish I would have treated my body better when I was younger if I knew I was going to have so many aches and pains today, kids. Amen by all these in the congregation. These businessmen made no allowance for unforeseen circumstances because they mistakenly thought they were going to be around forever. And none of us know what will happen in the future. Absolutely none of us. We are, we are given two very significant reasons why we should never presume upon the future. First, life is unpredictable. Count on it. Life is unpredictable. Just one big if. Right in the middle of life is the word if. <laughs> Any way you look at it, life is pretty iffy to say the least. Proverbs 27 says, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring. So life is unpredictable. Is it right? Don't know what to expect when you get up in the mornings, when you head out the door to wherever you're going, to work or to the restaurant, to have some bacon and eggs or whatever it is that you do. Let me say, life is unpredictable. You can order, you can order fried eggs at the same restaurant day after day after day, and everything's fine. And then, ten one day, they bring you the eggs, and they're not cooked to your satisfaction. It's unpredictable. Unpredictable. Life is Im unmeasurable. The, King, the New King James says, "Life is even a vapor that appears for a little time and then vanishes away." The King James says, "A vapor that appears for a time." and then vanishes away. And the classic standard says, for your life is a bit of smoke that appears for a while and then vanishes. The Greek word used here is atmos, from which we get the word atmosphere. Uh, how many of you still use hairspray? I use hairspray. <laughs> I'm amazed by the way that as soon as I spray my hairspray, it seems to vanish. You can't see it. Am I right? You spray, you can see it coming out of the can, but then boof, it's gone. And I know my head's not absorbing all of that. It can't. 
Or maybe it is, and that's my problem. <laughs> oh well. We've all got the picture of these verses. We experience its reality all the way around us. The National Center for Health Statistics 2004 study of the life expectancy was 77.8 years. 2018 CIA Worldview study, 78.6 years. And women live longer than men. But eventually death is no respecter of gender, race, origin, even age itself. The life is compared in Scripture as the wind that blows and is compared to a shadow. It's compared to the width of a hand. It's compared to a weaver's web. And James compares it to a vapor. Psalms 90 and 12 says, Teach us to make the most of our time so that we may grow in wisdom. 1 Samuel 23, David said, Yet as surely as the Lord lives and as you live, there is only a step between me and death. At the moment he wrote those words, he understood the essence of what James would come to write centuries and generations later, like his life of vapor. If we are blessed with tomorrow, it will come to pass quickly. Amen. Think about this. Think about this. A lightning bolt lasts 45 to 55 microseconds. The average running shoe worn by the average runner on an average surface will last 350 to 500 miles. A hard pencil can write up to 30,000 words or draw a line more than 30 miles long. Most ballpoint pens will draw a line 4,000 to 7,500 feet long. Leather combat boots have a wartime lifespan of six months, a peacetime lifespan of eight months. A 100 watt incandescent bulb will last about 750 hours. A 25 watt bulb will last 2,500 hours. The number of times a light bulb is turned on and off has little to do with the lifespan. A one dollar bill lasts approximately 18 years in circulation. So these things have time lines. The atheist says there is no tomorrow. The Christian says there is plenty of hope for tomorrow. The teenager says tomorrow can't get here fast enough. The senior says tomorrow is already here. Huh? Yeah. The outlook of life as we enjoy it at this moment is unknown to us. We don't know what's in store for us. We don't know the duration or the direction of life. That's why it's so important that we understand the essence of the teachings of our Lord. That is, that we might obey the will of the Father. Remember the model prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We are earthen vessels, folks, and these bodies return to dust, and so we need to have God in us. Amen. The opportunity of life. And then there is the obedience of life in verses 15 through 17. Our faith calls for obedience. Our fortune requires obedience. Our focus should be directed to obedience. Someone has made the point, our faith tomorrow is only as good as it is today. We must measure on faith today so that we can have, we will have, we must measure on faith today so that faith will be adequate for tomorrow. No amount of money, influence, power, or planning can guarantee us a tomorrow. Only God can grant us another sunrise. Only God can grant us another breath. Why misplace your faith? Place it in God. Amen. Instead of saying, I'm going to do this and that and make this much money here and there, uh, we should say, if God wills it for my life and provides the opportunity, then I'll go there. He holds the entire universe together by His Word alone. He can take our lives at any moment, and He'd still be God. Amen. He is God, and we are not. He is in charge, and not us. Prosperity requires sacrifice and submission, but to obey is better than to sacrifice. James is challenging us here to demonstrate an attitude of submission to God, to acknowledge that all of our life is to be lived out in recognition of the fact that God is sovereign and in charge of everything. He commands a few Future and he runs my life. Amen. So we've learned 
the folly to count of the future, the frailty of life, and the faith needed today for tomorrow, which leads us to our last point. Seems like the message always comes back to the point of our obedience. God's going to do what He promised to do. The question is, how about you? Let's look at anyone who knows the good he ought to do and does it not. It sins. Did you know that you sin by doing nothing? Someone has put it this way, Procrastination is my sin. It brings me nothing but sorrow. I know that I should stop it, and so I will tomorrow. <laughs> Have you noticed when you procrastinate during the right, doing the right thing, you end up doing the wrong thing? Knowing what should be done obligates a person to do it. Amen. Delayed obedience is disobedience. Hear me now. Every parent knows that delayed obedience is really disobedience. If you tell a child to wash the dishes and they say to you, Sure, Dad, I'll do it in two days. That's not obedience. That's disobedience. So I want to give you seven principles of victory today for tomorrow. Remember our loyalty to Christ. Mark 12 and 30 says, And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. Amen. Make no provision for worry. Worry is to be anxious. Worry is to be uneasy. Worry is to be troubled. Good advice I got this morning. Pray more, worry less. Couldn't put it better. To worry about tomorrow is to be unhappy tomorrow. See, consider yourself worthy of God's care. The old song, The Eyes on the Sparrow. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. For His eyes is on the sparrow. And I know He watches me. Amen. Develop faith today. Feed your faith. Exercise your faith. Support your faith. Seek first the kingdom of God. Be kingdom focused. Live for Jesus. Conquer troubles today. Deal with the situations of life. Acknowledge them. Pray about them. Seek counsel, whatever needs to conquer our troubles today. I'm simply sharing with you the words and what I believe to be the theology of Jesus as He's presented to us. Life may be short, but it can be sweet and satisfying. Let's make the most of life by pouring ourselves into the people that we love, dedicating ourselves to the one who loves us most. Consider the outlook of life, the opportunities of life, the obedience which God requires in this life, and learn to apply the principles of verses 7 and 8. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil. Draw nigh to God. Cleanse your hands and purify your hearts. Dad says, time sure goes slow when you don't have anything to do. I'm telling you, church, we've got lots to do. We've got lots to do. We need to be busy working, studying, reading the Bible, doing whatever it is that God is calling us to do. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll tell you what, this is the best congregation of children that I've ever been part of in my life to stand and preach like this and have these kids uh, obediently listen so well and pay attention. We didn't hear a weep or a whine out of these kids, did we? I hope they took us up that will help them understand what Christian life is all about. Father, in your name I pray that as the invitation is given, uh, people would just be honest in Jesus' name. Amen.